and welcome to Championship Chatter here on Pitch Football. Good evening. <laughs> You're not John Hill. <laughs> no, I'm the better looking one. <laughs> slightly more hair than John Hill. So slightly. <laughs> Pretty much got an afro compared to John Hill. <laughs> this is Big Kev, the old man. Uh, he's a fellow blade, so more Sheffield smugness, I'm afraid, but not after Tuesday. Uh, we're not in the pub, couldn't get it as a venue, so we're here in the humble abode of uh, Mr. Kevin's Chef United Bastion. The shrine, here. the shrine, I call it. The shrine. Yeah. <laughs> we should dismantle the bastard thing after Tuesday. <laughs> uh, if you don't already, follow Big Kev on Twitter. He is one of the showroom view lads. His username will be underwear. Lads, 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 lads. <laughs> Uh, got a lot to talk about. Uh, one thing I'm not rushing to talk about, so we'll leave that till fucking last. Uh, Blackpool lost at home three 0 to Middlesbrough. Yeah, I think Middlesbrough are starting to show a bit now. Um, do, you th- th- do you think? It, do you think it's just a bit of a new manager bounce under South under New Lad? I want to say Southgate, then it's not uh, under, under New Lad. And it's... Know, they've always had the players there, haven't they? It's just for some reason they weren't performing. I don't know. But the Wilder situation is a bit strange because I, I don't think it. I think Wilder were maybe promised players that he couldn't bring in. Yeah, similar situation. Yeah, and it, it, you look at their squad is paper thin. Mm. Similar to when Jukanovic came in for us, maybe with right players there, Jukanovic could have got it out of us. But if you don't have the players you need for how you want to play, it's never going to yeah, work. Yeah, I think you were fighting a losing battle right from the start. So. And I mean, it's going to piss a lot of Borough fans off. You've got you've got Middlesbrough friends. And I've got Middlesbrough friends. But, so. friends. <laughs> but I, I do think Middlesbrough are one of them clubs that have these delusions that they should be bigger than what they are. You are where you are. And I think they expect instant success. We've got this many fans. We take a lot to of be away. Fair, we do this, to be we fair, do that. Chris, who is my Middlesbrough friend, friend. If, uh, he, uh, he he's said they're, they're shocking, basically. Mm. So they're very disappointed, especially because after how, how they finished last season, yeah. they were expecting to but storm it, through this year. A lot of players left at the end of that season, didn't they? So we had an even thinner squad. But with it, this new manager, I, personally, to me, I think it's a new manager bounce and I think it'll wear off Hopefully. after a while. <laughs> sorry, Chris, sorry. <laughs> Uh, one team that are making, uh, like bringing their season to life, they won away at Cardiff 3 2. Hull, where it? have they come from? I don't know, they were only one win, weren't they? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, again, new it's manager. A surprising win, I must admit. But, uh, They've been on fire, though, especially away from home. This new manager's come in. Cardiff, though, they're a funny team. They're, one week they're winning, next week they're losing. Uh, yeah. they're, they're just. Well, so is everybody else in this yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, I mean, we, we go there on Saturday, so. If all can do it, can we do it? That's the question. Yes, exactly, yeah. <laughs> I think the thing with when you look at all is they brought in that many players. A lot of them were injured. It's always going to take time to gel. Uh, and from the Hull and Back podcast, constantly said to me, look, we've got all these players and the manager's not playing an attacking system. He's playing really like Slav style. Mm. He's playing. And I think the new manager's come in. Even the even the um, temporary gaffer were getting results out of him, weren't they? Yeah. So I think yeah, they've, got, they've got some good players. Yeah. It? Slater. He, he, oh. He, oh, I was I was a bit gutted when he left us actually because he's, he's a good player. They were top of the league a little while back in that poison chalice position, a top spot with QPR. Now they've lost it again. A team with a new manager, Huddersfield. But it, this seems to have happened since that since they were linked. Link with job at um, we were in a link with job week QPR bus. Oh, were Wolves. Yeah, Wolves. Yeah, yeah. They were, they were looked as though they were like that about whether they were going or not. And then and since then it's just uh, they've just <clears throat> some capitulated. <laughs> yeah, I mean look, Huddersfield, they, they, they couldn't buy a win, could they? No. Thomas, uh, but again, new gaffer. Yeah, yeah. So. Mm. Oh, we best fucking talk about it, aren't we? You've been absolutely rinsed online. 7,000 views on your video when you made a joke in Prediction 8-1. The Rotherham fans out there have actually <laughs> cut out the bit where you're joking and only put the bit on where you say 8-1 and call them Little Toy Town. I weren't and, uh, joking! <laughs> <laughs> They've rinsed you! No, I, I, I always say I don't predict scores at all, so... So when you I do... Mean, so, so it were a bit of a piss take and uh, hopefully... Me, me rather than friends will forgive me, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. Is that enough about that, Max? Yeah. No, no. Uh, no. I think it just shows to me that what I've been saying for a while is Eckingbottom's only got one style of playing football. He's not very good at changing it. People are going to sound like, it sounds like I'm wanting him out, but that's not the case. I just want him to adapt. You're talking about changing it. The changes he made were just... Oh, they were woeful. Beyond, beyond belief. That, that's where 
I just can't believe what he did. Uh, like bringing Sharpie on. No. God, I love Sharpie, but he's, he's not the man at the minute. Uh, you got Kadra there, which he showed when he did come on for the last 10 minutes. He was running rings around him. Yeah. That, that's what it needed. Sharpie was. Uh, well, he went, uh, when we play teams that set up in a certain way where we can't overload midfield, we've got too much of a gap between midfield and strikers, which works well when you're playing an attacking team and you're hitting them on counter mm -hmm. or if you're absorbing pressure. But against other teams that come to sit in and nick a goal, it don't work, it's shown at Coventry. And to make changes went nil nil and like well they were one nil down last night, but like at Coventry and other places, Middlesbrough where we were drawing and mm. when he sat Kadri down, it, he's, his, his game impact is bafflingly bad. Yeah, yeah. And he's only got a, a, a plan A. There's no plan B, C, D, anything. He's only one way of yeah. playing football. It, instead of thinking, this is who we're playing against, they're gonna play like this will adapt to this, this and this. He doesn't, he goes out and says, we'll just play every team same. Yeah. And if you if you fucking prime 90s Brazil or France, you can do that. Yeah. But we're Sheffield United and we can't do I, that. I don't know, I, I just don't, I don't know. Is he skate? Is he sca Silly question, because I don't think he is. Is he skating on thin ice? Yeah. No, yeah I, I think, think so, yeah. yeah. He's got a 63 year contract. <laughs> that, so. so now I think, uh, <laughs> when they're good, they're very, very good. When they're bad, they're horrid. Yeah, and I mean, but Bristol last week we were very, very lucky to get a win there. It was a very similar performance against Rotherham, weren't it? So it's, yeah. uh, I don't know. When, when, I mean, if you look back at last Saturday and, and Burnley, second half against Burnley, we're just something else. Yeah, it? yeah. That's probably one of the best second halves I can remember actually but, it's, uh, so, but it was just so disappointing to come from like after the Lord Mayor's show it was the most blades thing ever to happen because that's anybody sort of my age will, will have experienced it so many times yeah. it's, uh, it's untrue so and they, they always seem to do it when it's a full house and all that's, yeah. the, that's the disappointing thing so uh, that's, that's enough about us thank fuck <laughs> <laughs> Uh, QPR, we mentioned it earlier, they've imploded uh, since he got linked with the Wolves job. Do you see them drifting off completely or do you think they've got a second wind in them? I don't know, they, I just can't believe how they because they were playing some fantastic... They were best uh, team to come to lane, I've seen. Uh, yeah, definitely. And, uh, well, before Burnley, mm. first half. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think they'll, they'll, they'll hang up there, they'll pull a win out, and like everybody else is doing, win one, lose one, it's just... Yeah. It's just Crackers. The most crazy division I've ever known, seriously. Which brings us on to that, like we've just said as well, is top spot cursed? Oh, it seems to be, doesn't it? Nobody I'm, wants it. How many different leads has it been this year? There's about six, seven. Reading, Burnley, Oz, QPR, Millwall, Millwall Blackburn. Yeah, Blackburn. It's, it's been madness. It's crackers. It, usually, you see three table forming. I know it's a bit different because World Cup's coming up. Incidentally, this will be the last championship chatter before the World Cup, but keep your eyes out because there may be a World Cup show coming your way here on Pitch Football. <laughs> See that shameless plug? God, God damn, I'm good at my job. <laughs> but anyway, it, it does seem to be cursed and usually by Christmas, you know who's re got, realistically. I, I think the ones that will be up there are up there or thereabouts at the minute. I, I, but if you, you look at how close it is, you I, can say that. Like Rotherham said the other night, I think they were, they were four points of a relegation and Five or six points yeah. of, a, of a promotion. So it's, uh, Usually at top four, you can pretty see now you can see four teams that's fighting for top two. Yeah. Now you can see like, even eight, we're in November, I know we've got a gap coming up before Christmas. Now you've got a team of ten, and five of them could end up fighting for top four, and other five could end up mid-table. It's fucking yeah. crackers. Never know, I don't like it. It's, it's the strangest division I've ever known in my three or four years that I've been a blade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what we'll do now is we're going to go around the championship fans. It's nice to uh, chat about Hull City in a, in a more positive light. Uh, obviously, Shotter wasn't getting the, the performances that we needed uh, from the squad. Dawson studied the ship, got a bit more work ethic involved, and, and obviously Rosini has come back after many meetings with the owner if it's the, uh, the, the bill for the vision that he's got, that he wants to play, possession-based, you know, very structured and organised. And two tough first games, you know, away at Millwall and Cardiff, and we managed to get a nil-nil draw away at Millwall with... 10 men for an hour of the game only our second clean sheet of the season and then a, a good win against Cardiff where we come from behind so hopefully you know we can learn this style of play a bit more uh, so we can eliminate the risks at the back but I'm expecting us to beat Reading who are in poor form Rosie's first home game in charge 
and then we've got a nice positive month for the World Cup break to come back and have some more players from injury as well. The end of another Watford week then, and in a lot of ways it's seven days that sums up the Hornets season. So far, they lost the game. They probably should have won at the weekend at home to Coventry City. Uh, no discredit to Coventry at all. They played really well, but Watford had enough chances to probably win that game quite comfortably. Went on to lose it. It was just one of those days, really. Watford fans not too disheartened by that result, especially seeing as they followed it up with a win against Reading on Tuesday. That made it three wins in four after what's been a pretty topsy-turvy season really. Watford haven't been able to find any consistency but three out of four not bad at all. They really had to grind it out against Reading. Reading came for the draw, weren't too interested in um, in taking Watford on and made it very very difficult. It wasn't much of a spectacle. I won't be asking for the DVD for Christmas, put it that way. But Watford doing really well under pretty difficult circumstances. They're having suspensions and injuries. Of course, they're biting for every team at the moment. But Watford really feeling the uh, feeling the pinch there. They're just not able to field their first eleven at any stage really this season. So going into the World Cup break, there's one game left away at Bristol City. I think if we can pick up a point or even a win at Ashton Gate. That'll send us Watford supporters into the break really, really happy. And a pretty stodgy, dodgy uh, start under Rob Edwards. Slavin Bilic has made Watford much more coherent, much, much more interesting and impressive as a side. So going into the, the World Cup break, I think Watford fans are feeling a lot more upbeat, a lot more confident, a lot more happy. And if you can just go in with another decent result, then even more so. But safely ensconced in those playoff places where you'd expect Watford to be, really. And with that break, hopefully get some players back fit and then maybe look to add to the squad again in January. Perhaps things are looking up for Watford. So it's a happy Hornet. Check it out. Borough, we mentioned they've found new life. We'll go into that a little bit more. As it seemed a strange, strange appointment to me. You know? Who is it? <laughs> I, keep, I keep wanting to say Southgate. <laughs> Michael Carrick, gone to Middlesbrough. We talked about it a bit earlier. I thought it was a really strange appointment, but it is breathing new life into it. Well, yeah, like you say, is it just a a, a kick from new manager? But uh, uh, which they did last year, we we, we wilder, didn't they? Don't yeah, they, they yeah, were, big time. They were nowhere until Wilder went in, and then all of a sudden they're, they're fighting for promotion. So is it is it come a bit earlier this time we carry and can they carry it all way? That's but there's, there's still a good few points behind that. They've got some catching up to do at minute, but. It can sort of turn around as we know in this division. He was in your uh, insight, your Middlesbrough friend. Has he, has he said anything about Carrick? Uh, no, I, I haven't actually spoke to him about it, uh, to be honest. He's still on piss after wins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, I don't know what he'll make of it. it yeah. He loved Wilder. It, it, yeah. And he, I think, it, like it, like he did with us, he just fell apart a bit, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. So. It's a shame. Um, personally, for me, I, I don't see it lasting. Uh, I think the squad's too thin. That's why they fell off at playoff push last year, weren't it? Yeah, yeah, basically. So. One thing we are going to mention, we mentioned it in the midweek video, uh, and now it seems to have actually happened. I said if Nathan Jones left Luton to go to Southampton, he showed he had absolutely zero fucking ambition and always bothered about it, wasn't it? Because <laughs> to me, Southampton is one of them teams that they're not looking to proceed and go on to the top 10 and get better every year. They're and they're, they're, not, they're not fighting. They're happy to be a corporate mid table. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're, so it's, it's short. And I thought Jones were a very ambitious manager. And it's shown to me that him going there, it's, it's about money at the end of the day. How will that impact on Luton? That's, that's the next question, of course, isn't it? So, but uh, to me, I think it would. Like, to me, if you wanted to step up, if you can't get Luton up, which was a big ask, but he got paused last time, <laughs> looking a bigger up. ask this season. But they're up there. They're up there. Them. So to me, if they came down, imagine if Everton got relegated <laughs> and they were after a manager. Yeah. <laughs> Why, would that not be the perfect job for a manager who I thought had ambition like him mm. even if they still back skin the teeth and sat Lampard and they want to go in a different direction apply for that one I guess, Southampton's I guess, fucking stupid I guess some uh, some just want to have said that they managed in Premier League yeah. you know, so, I don't know but, really? uh, well, it just seems... I mean look at uh, in the, uh, what's gone to Chelsea from Brighton yeah Potter it's just, it's just uh, that were a wrong I, I can't I don't know I love I Potter and I think Potter is Horribly, but you know, he's, 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 he's one of, if not currently, the best English manager about is Potter. But Chelsea is not the club to no. go to. It, but it, if you like, I said about Southampton, Chelsea at the minute are happy being what they are. They, they, they want to win the league and they want to do this and do that, but they, they've just had a fucking crisis with their owner. They've just got a new owner who seems to want to fucking play an FA Cup final in America or some shit like yeah. that, a stupid cunt. And to me, for 
for Potter, hang about for a man you will do well maybe not man you because everyone is at same hang about for a job or an up and a team that's coming hang about for Leicester job mm, well yeah that's a, that's fun. I mean but, uh, Southampton again they, you always think will there be a cup team but they, str- they struggled like hell last night against some first division crap some yeah they? some South Barnsley <laughs> idiots if you're going to struggle against them you've got big problems but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but now but going back to manager uh, Manager keep when the a new manager. I mean, look at uh, Sunderland. It hasn't really happened there, yeah. has it? They're, 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 why yeah. did? Why? What was that all about? <laughs> Me and John will say it all the time. They, Sunderland have got little fucking Tony. Oh, save the two, save the back <laughs> And fucking he's pissed up and gone to Stoke for some for, reason. For some reason, exactly. So, uh, it makes no sense. But no, I'm very shocked that Jones has gone there. I thought he had more ambition than that. Uh, I do wish him well because I like him as a manager, yeah. but I just think it's a very it lacks ambition than with Southampton and that's why they were attracting the likes of Ralph Hass and Hutter Latton and Batten Batten. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Now, <laughs> We've eased you in, so I think it's time for a bit of foreplay. Oh my Ooh. God. Long time. It's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you, know the, you know the game by now. Go onto the Pitch Football app, pick four games out of the list of games available. For each result you get right, you get points towards the leaderboard. There is a quarterly prize and a yearly prize. Points make prizes. Can't stress it enough. If you're not playing what do it... points make? Prizes! <laughs> if you're not in it, you can't win it. We'll give you a little preview. We're going to pick four championship games on this weekend and we're going to give you what we think the results are going to be. Kev, you're the new guy, so we'll let you go first. Coventry versus QPR. Don't have to be a score, just the result. Coventry. Coventry. Hmm. Against QPR, I think they're going to, they're going no, to keep struggling. They're, Coventry's just... They, they seem to be hitting a little bit of a, a run now. But again, a funny team, but yeah, I think there's nothing fucking funny about Wasps. <laughs> little arrogant drummer wankers. <laughs> Fuck off. You know what I'm going to say already? It's going to be Wasps, wasps are going to lose. QPR win. <laughs> Hull versus Reading. Difficult for me to judge this one. Ooh, yeah. Reading's, Reading's not set it well the light like they were, but they're still not a bad team. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'd go Reading on that one. You're ready. I think, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, go for, I'm gonna go for a draw because I find it very difficult to pick this one. Mm. This one should be very interesting. Norwich with their shit manager Dean Smith. Yeah, now then, this is probably the first real test that Borough have had. So we'll, we'll see. Carrick's gonna have his hands full with this one because Norwich aren't setting well the light and they're no, grinding they're results. They're grinding them out and and doing the usual. Wasting an hour's time, and but they've done that under two managers, haven't they? Well, yeah. Imagine what a team like Norwich would do with players they've got if they had an attacking minded manager. But why do they need to do that? They don't. That's, that's, probably, that's, that's the problem. Yeah, they've got good, they've got the players, and they roll around and oh. Do you reckon if they if they had an attack minded manager, God forbid, a Chris Wilder with players <laughs> they've got, <laughs> they'd survive the Premier League when they, they go they up. Probably would, yeah. They'd no, probably I'm not saying that as a Wilder fact. You take any attack minded manager, take uh, um, Jones who's gone to Southampton, take. Paul Ince from Reading. Mm. We all take piss out of him, but he's attack minded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take one of them and put them in fr- in charge of a Norwich with players you've got available and stop fucking wasting time after five seconds of a game. You've got a, a good team that yeah, can progress. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All that said, Borough are going to win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm, uh, I'm going to draw on that one. West Bromwich Albion. Now they've got rid of the kebab muncher against. That was another appointment. Oh, that that fucking one, crazy. It? Uh, it's what, uh, we must pick somebody from the managerial men <laughs> Sam Allardyce is still semi-retired yeah, that's the yeah, only reason yeah. he's not gone next yeah. uh, but they are they are starting to turn this sinking ship they, around yeah, they also, they, I, mean, I still think they're in danger of getting relegated it, yeah, I, I, can't. Wait, I, I can do you know simple reason why look at ownership it's as bad as Birmingham's mm, if yeah, not worse I, I think they've got enough to, to get them out of that sort of danger but yeah, I, I can't see them Storming up league or all like that, but uh, I do think they'll win that game against Stoke. Though, against Alex St- Stoke, Alex Neil Stoke, Stoke. Uh, Shit. Yeah, and they beat us. <laughs> What's that say about us? Um, <laughs> I, I agree. I'm going to go for West Brom. Mm. That rounds up this week's erotic edition of Four Play. <laughs> <laughs> Most enjoyable few minutes of my life. So I'm just, that's <laughs> the first time you've said that. <laughs> if you have enjoyed this video, unfortunately, Big Kev's only a substitute. He won't be here every week. Thank God for that. Give him some, <laughs> give him some love on Twitter. He's had enough fucking hate from Toy Town this week. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not seeing that. Seven, uh, up to ten thousand views now. Oh, I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> Funnily enough, there's been more views of them taking piss out of our Kevin than can go in their ground. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off.
that. No, I do like Toy. I do like Toy Town. Much respect. You deserve your three points. Can't take it away from you. But fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> this is. I've been Johnny. And that'd be Big Kev. This has been Championship Chatter here on Pitch Football. Do not forget to download the app. If you haven't done already, subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, leave a comment, all that other good stuff. And we'll see you after the World Cup. <laughs>